Do you really believe that a VTuber says he loves you, then he loves you? Are you gonna be tricked so easily? I love you guys. I love people who support us. Stupid chat. Rarely in the VTuber scene, let alone in VTuber's history, have we ever witnessed such a display of manipulation and hypocrisy as we're about to see in today's story. Sure, there has been a few outliers here and there among indies who have engaged in dubious actions while profiting from the anonymity that comes with hiding behind an avatar. However, it's the sheer scale of the events that are about to unfold that makes this story truly unique. And while I understand some of the motivations behind them, I can't say that I wholeheartedly agree with them. Now, before we start, I want to underline that most of the information and documents that took place during that time are either destroyed and the ones that survived are not necessarily the most trustworthy material. So I suggest that you take everything you will see in this video with a grain of salt, as these are accounts or claims that are most likely generated by users or someone's recollections of the events. But I'll do my best to untangle everything and walk you through the several claims that have happened as well as show receipts. But as usual, I suggest you guys do your own research so you can come to your own conclusions. And as usual, all of my sources will be listed in the description down below. This video is meant to be an accompanying video to my last video on Kyrio Coco. So if you want to fully understand the complex power dynamics and politics at play, I highly recommend you watch it as well, as I'll only refer to briefly some of the concepts that we already talked about there. Now. Let's get right into it. I don't know about you guys, but all these negative posts I have to read sometimes got me all stressed up. That's why our next video sponsors Royal Match is the perfect free game to relax and unwind to. Play it from the comfort of your couch or on the go because you don't even need internet for it. Royal Match is a match 3 puzzle game where you need to help King Robert build and renovate his castle. It's super fun and engaging with just enough competitiveness to keep you focused. Plus, there's no ads so you can really zone in with no distractions. You might have noticed tons of people playing it and team up together. So don't miss out. If you want to play and get the royal treatment like me, make sure to download the game for free using the link in my description below. And now, back to the video. Those who've only been fan of the entertainment mogul whole life for the last two years are probably not aware of these events. Because these date back to up to three years ago, which is basically a ancient history and internet time. There used to be a Hololive branch in China. Hololive owed a lot of their growth to their Chinese fandom as well. As we mentioned before, they helped popularize their VTubers through various gacha game collabs such as Azure Lane. Add to that that anime is quite popular there and you can see why China would be a good fit for Hololive. Additionally, Hololive gained popularity on Bilibili before they even opened their own official accounts there. There were fanmade accounts that gained lots of traction, almost as much as the VTubers' main YouTube accounts. And eventually, Hololive figured, why not just team up with those fanmade accounts and basically made them official. They debuted the first gen branch in 2019, and that branch was quite successful until its very core was shaken up by the Taiwan incident. During that incident, Hololive was split. They were debating on whether to completely close off the branch or stay in China as the situation was getting quite shaky. In China, you either play by their rules or you don't. So when Kiryo Koko and Hachama mentioned Taiwan in their YouTube analytics, it made waves of backlash. As China does not consider Taiwan a country, but rather they consider it a Chinese state. As every news reporter in the country picked up on this story, this became too much for China officials to disregard. And since that point on, they did everything they could to make Covercorp bow down to them and put sticks in their wheels every chance they got. And they're not the first company to do this to. Large conglomerates have been subjected to abide by the One China policy long before. McDonald had to apologize for showing Taiwan as a country in one of their ads as well. So anyway, while Coco and Hachama were suspended, everyone was wondering what would happen to Whole Life CN. 
a rumor started that the whole life Chinese VTubers would probably be terminated. But it was also speculated that they would be able to keep their avatars after graduation and transfer to another company. Doris in a stream on Billy Billy even mentions that Cover wouldn't take a cut from them in the last month of the graduation and they were debating on whether or not they'd keep their avatars. This was never confirmed by Hololive itself, but it got perpetrated by word of mouth as also various YouTubers and news drama channels started talking about it. Everyone was worried about what would happen to the whole branch, but it felt like Cover wanted to let the girls off nicely as the whole fiasco was really none of their fault. We don't know the exact reasons as to why the girls started saying that they would get to keep their avies or whether Cover actually discussed this with them. And we will probably never find out. One of the main protagonists in this story was Artia. Artia is a Chinese VTuber from Hololive that gained a lot of success with Western audiences. She was entertaining, she spoke English fairly well, and she often fashioned her content around shitposting, memes, and watching her was like watching any edgy gamer streamer that were popular at that time. Yeah, I love I love girls with big swords. That's kind of hot, right, chat? So she was very easy to relate to and be entertained by. She first started off on Billy Billy and would occasionally stream on Twitch for her Western fanbase, which garnered her a lot of overseas fans. There wasn't many Hololive VTubers on Twitch back then, so people were actually grateful that she would stream for them on that platform. Not only that, but she was a skilled FPS gamer who reached high placements on the Overwatch leaderboard. Break is one HP. Soldier, 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 huge brothers, huge, let's go dude! The other VTubers from that branch were Rosalyn, Spade Echo, Doris, Sivia, and Yogiri. At the height of the Taiwan backlash, Coco was incessantly harassed. YouTube and CoverCorp were essentially powerless in protecting her. Her aunties viewed themselves as going to war against Coco, they saw themselves as a military junta, so to speak, that existed to make her life miserable. They were extremely organized and efficient into harassing her, from creating bots to spamming her chat to creating fan art of other VTubers with hidden messages that were uh, not so nice to mothers, to hijacking hashtags. Their harassment was incessant. So yeah, Coco was having a tough time. Amongst that chaos, Artia tweeted out her desire to stay away from politics, stating that her stream was not the place for it, and who would blame her? Hololife fanbases were divided. It was essentially China on one side and Taiwan and everybody else on the other. So it makes sense that a streamer whose main focus is entertainment would want to steer away from further dividing their fanbase. Except that's exactly when came a shocking discovery. A crazy plot twist that no one could have anticipated. The discovery that the main perpetrators of the harassment campaign actually came from within the company. At first, it started as rumors. At the crux of the turmoil, some pro life Chinese fans called out Artia, Rosalind, and Doris as wolf warriors. Wolf Warrior is a Chinese nationalist propaganda movie. In fact, its sequel Wolf Warrior 2 is one of the highest grossing movies in China's history. So in this context, the term Wolf Warrior is often used to describe a supporter of the Nationalist Party or the CCP in China. And Artia and Doris watched that movie on her channel during the incident. So, yes, indeed. But these allegations were quickly disregarded. This was simply another rumor Auntie started to discredit the girls and further divide the fanbase. And this made sense. This was more believable. After all, this was a period in Hololife's history that was riddled with misinformation, rumors spread like wildfire, and navigating between what was true and what was false was extremely challenging. Plus, some people were claiming that every movie or game that was watched by the girls' channel had to be approved by Hololive anyway. So CoverCorp had approved that movie. It probably held no political meaning, right? As rumors were going around the internet, some YouTubers' news channels started reporting on it, but were met with so much backlash that they would eventually retract their statement. The general sentiment was that those allegations were fake and perpetrated by antis to turn the Hololive members against each other. But then came a document. 
compiling all of the evidence from a Chinese whistleblower. And those evidence that the world discovered in that document were truly shocking. While Artia and other Chinese members, with the exception of Yugiri and Echo, were maintaining a facade of being apolitical, meanwhile on their alt accounts they were covertly encouraging harassment of foreigners and even the harassment of their fellow colleague Coco, as well as having very strong nationalist sentiments. And to that I'll add that supporting whichever political party is a choice, and it's a personal choice that no one should be able to take away from you. I'm not here to dictate anyone's political view, however, I do believe that an individual liberty stops when they start to impede on someone else's freedom, and in this case, they did. So this document got popularized by a YouTuber by the name of Zero Void, and who was like, hey, I think we should take a second look at this because this evidence seems pretty realistic and that's when a whole can of worms opened up. It was eventually uncovered that Artia had participated in a 2016 Facebook event which was a cyber attack against Taiwanese political figures and even Apple Daily. And it was even alleged that she was bragging about it and local news outlets were apparently praising her. The same day that Hachama and Coco were suspended, Artia retweeted her pacifist post. There were some screenshots that were posted on her comment section of her saying the opposite on her Weibo account. And that's when people essentially found out about her alt accounts. And this particular fact linking her accounts together has been highly debated. I've even seen whole documents claiming that these were not her alts, which made me quite skeptical about the whole thing. Because if those accounts are not her alts, then the rest of the evidence just crumbles. And there were also some accounts claiming that she didn't actually play a large part in the cyber attacks, all she did was offhandedly retweet some things. But then, as I dug further, I found much more evidence that was pretty damning. It seems now like the majority is siding with the fact that she did what was claimed that she had done. As even her fans were linking some of the accounts together, it wasn't too hard for western fans to put two and two together. And apparently this whole time her true allegiance were known to her Chinese fans. In some posts that were exposed and translated, she allegedly said hold the bottom line, which means in this case the one China policy. And on the day of Coco's and Hachama's return, she tweeted again on her Billy Billy account. We mentioned earlier that Doris and Artia watched a Wolf Warrior movie on stream on the very same day Coco was suffering serious spamming. And this is what Chinese aunties had to say about it. We see them mocking and belittling foreign fans who are in the dark about the girls' true affiliations. Rhetorics such as these were pretty common as Chinese nationalist fans were laughing at the fact that Western audience even when faced with the truth, did not believe that the girls were wolf warriors and brushed it off as anti's propaganda. Also, they heavily supported the departure of Hololive China from Hololive as they felt like their punishment towards Coco was just not strong enough. The document also revealed that certain Reddit and Twitter posts were faked by aunties to quell any suspicion against the CN crew. And this was proven because they found those very same aunties bragging about it on Chinese websites. Essentially, the person who made the document finally admits that they decided to be the whistleblower for this because they were tired of seeing the whole Western audience support these girls and be kept in the dark while behind the scenes were getting mocked berated and dragged by Chinese nationalists. Basically, the whole life Chinese aunties would blame Cover and Coco. Meanwhile, the whole life overseas fans would support Cover, Coco and the Hololive Chinese members and while it was expected of the overseas fans and Chinese fans to be on different side of the fence, they didn't realize that the Hololive China members were lying to the overseas fans and also blamed Cover and Coco with the exception of Yugiri and Echo. After what we can only assume some behind the scenes talk with Hololive happened, Sivia and Artia announced their withdrawal from Hololive. A lot of their Chinese fans, as well as their non-Chinese fans, were incredibly saddened by the news. But again, to Chinese aunties, 
This was despicable, weak behavior by Westerners. And they mocked them for missing the Chinese VTubers and even used racial slurs to describe overseas fans. Artia then dropped a tweet longer announcing her graduation. And then her and Sivia went live to explain the graduation of the Chinese branch on stream. They are yeah. still, we are still in the process and there are still a lot, a of, lot things. of things that we uh, both have to deal with and it's mm -hmm. not only about the company. But shortly it after that, Cover made both of the girls retract their statement as the company had not yet officially announced their graduation. Basically, they had went ahead and announced it themselves before Cover could even do it. And then came the official announcement. And I don't blame people for not initially believing this and for letting this behavior go on for way too long. After all, we cannot phantom what we could never do. And most people wouldn't be able to do what this girl did. It's one thing to hold certain political views to yourself, but it's another thing to lie and present yourself as a total opposite. To pretend you're an innocent person who wouldn't dabble into politics but to then participate in cyber attacks and encourage harassment behind the scenes. That's some truly evil mastermind puppeteer stuff. That's the kind of stuff you only see in animes. So when people finally saw Artia for who she was, there was shock. The overseas fans felt slanted, betrayed, and rightfully so. Artia and Chinese partisans had been mocking them behind the scenes, calling them racial slurs and expressing anti-foreigner sentiments. Was this the same girl they had been watching and supporting? She wasn't apolitical. She was the banner onto which Chinese nationalists were rallying behind. She was leading the charge. When those leaks started happening, Artya panicked and started tweeting on her alt accounts, trying to save whatever she could, before she ended up privating her channel. And as a side note here, I only discovered Artya while discovering this story, so my lens will definitely be colored by this. I'm sure if you've been a fan of her at one point and you've seen different sides of her, you will probably see the story differently. And in all fairness, there are people who did enjoy her content and who did miss her departure. Because I was a big fan of uh, Hollow CN, right? Uh, Ardia was my, was my Oshi. Like, if anything would have gotten me blacklisted from, from Hollow Live, it's probably, like, the angry that I said about when Hollow CN got shut down. So be aware of that, and you're free to make your own takes on this, of course, and I'll respect it. Shortly after these allegations came to light, Hololive was swift to act, effectively terminating the whole Hololive China branch without further ado. They released statements announcing several dates for the girls' graduation and departed from China promptly. And Hololive pullout game was on point there because they left right before China installed a very strict law that would greatly affect streaming in general. China's National Radio and Television Administration issued new streaming guidelines concerning super chats and e-commerce, essentially making it increasingly difficult to stream and be a VTuber. They underlined that streaming should promote good values and bad values such as vulgarity and flaunting money would be sanctioned. This law also stated that a stream should have a ratio of one mod to 50 viewers. And not any mods, mind you, but government mandated certified frontline moderators. And it was even encouraged to exceed that ratio, by the way. So hypothetically speaking, let's say a whole live streamer gets, I don't know, 2000 viewers per stream. Let's do the math here. It would result in needing 40 government certified moderators for that single stream. And this isn't just a last minute stream you do anymore. It's gotta be notified to the NRTA in advance. But the most significant change is that they also added a requirement for anyone who would like to donate through Super Chat. Real name verification or facial recognition along with a manual review will be necessary to use Super Chats from now on. Underage users will no longer be able to make donations. Furthermore, they have also imposed limitations on the amount you can donate per month. Essentially, if you want to donate, you will basically dox yourself. After this law came through, multiple notable 
several Japanese VTubers decided to leave the platform, to the demise of various aunties who of course decided in turn to harass them. You know what, I think you get the drill by now, let's just move on to the next segment. An article from the Xerto surfaced explaining that Bilibili is forcing all streamers above 500k followers to reveal their identity. They will start with the larger streamers, but eventually everyone will have to reveal their names. Now from my understanding, these are actually legislations that come directly from the government itself and seems particularly targeted at VTubers, as they already had access to their information before, but now they are forced to display their real name information publicly on their Bilibili profile as well. This is particularly worrisome for VTubers whose anonymity is greatly important for their work. I am curious to see how this plays out as Niji Sanji is still one of the remaining prominent VTubing agency that stayed in China and that still streams on this platform to this day. They have streamers such as Vox Akuma who has already had people breach his privacy in the past and has gotten multiple dox threats and even got doxed before. Perhaps we will see another large agency depart from there soon, or not, only time will tell. After the termination of the Hololive CN branch, most of the girls kept on VTubing under other personas. But for most of them, these new careers were either cut short or very lackluster. With the exception of Echo, who seems to be doing the best out of all of them, and became quite successful on Bilibili, as she is currently sitting very close to 1 million fans there. Doris ended up becoming hated by her own fan base as she got caught into even more drama. Yugiri reincarnated on Bilibili, but unfortunately had to graduate due to various reasons. Sivia is still active on her new alt and seems to be regretting that part of her life. Watching some of her footage was quite touching and really made me doubt the accusations against her as she seems like a genuinely sweet person. She apparently cut ties with anyone involved with Hollow Life from that era and I'm not gonna put footage of the girls that are still active on their new characters as I don't want people to go and harass anyone. Rosalind is still active to this day and enjoyed relative success cutting ties with anyone at Hololive. And as for Artia, she reincarnated as well, but things didn't go so smoothly for her. After the new Chinese law passed, she ran into some financial troubles. She decided to show her face to her fan base, and this completely backfired as her fan base turned against her because she didn't fit their beauty standards. She then decided to graduate herself with an announcement stating that she wants to put VTubing behind her once and for all and is simply going to work on herself from now on. Honestly, my opinion throughout this video has changed a lot. When I first started researching for this, I had a pretty good idea of how I saw the situation. But then once I saw a lot more from both sides, I started to realize that this was much more of a nuanced situation than it appeared. I realized that most people involved in this incident just want to move on from this and it seems like they regret a lot of their actions. In the end, no one deserves to be harassed and that goes from both sides. I blame the aunties, but I still have a tough time blaming individuals. I feel like we're all going through life with our own different lenses, trying to do the best we can. But that's just my opinion and I would love to know what you guys think of this in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Try to remember not to harass anyone involved in this video. Don't be weird and please don't do anything stupid. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe with the notification bell on so you never miss an upload. I upload VTuber deep dives weekly, so make sure to check out my other work if you're into this. And we recently got demonetized on one of our videos, so if you want to support the channel even further, click the join button below to become a channel member and become one of my patrons. By doing so, you will have your name displayed at the end of my video. Until next time, thank you to my patrons, Rona, Shafatnin, Twisted Washu, Swifto Saif, Barbara Ricketts, and Sir Calvacante. That they would most that they would mostly retract their statement. I'm gonna redo that sentence. Night,